Hello there. Hey, have you ever dreamt of owning your own Caribbean island? You know, a paradise in the sun. Well, now you can. And here it is. Your own dream island. Sand, sea and surf. In fact, anything you like, cos you're the designer. Come and have a look at this. To make your dream island, take a piece of cardboard box card and start by drawing a rough design of the shape of your island. And make sure you leave loads of space around the edge for the sea. Now, I'm doing an island with a cove here, a beach, and two hills. Now, to create the 3D shape of your island, scrunch up some balls of tissue paper or loo roll and dip them into some PVA glue mixed in equal parts with water. And just dip the bottom of those balls in and then put them onto your drawn island. Now, to create hills for your island, just scrunch up bigger balls of tissue paper or loo roll and, again, dip those into the PVA and water mixture, just the bottom of the ball in the glue. And you can actually use newspaper for this if you want and just press that onto the island. And then the messy bit. It wouldn't be heart attack if there wasn't a messy bit. Yeah, look at that, lot. Just slop the PVA glue all over those tissue balls and then take some more strips of tissue paper or loo roll, place those over those soggy tissue balls and then just with your fingers roughly press the tissue into the shape. I can feel it all squidgy inside there and then make it even messier. Look at this. I can see people all over the land now going, oh, that looks terrible. Well, it'll look brilliant in a minute. More glue on the top and then just take your paintbrush and very carefully just smooth all of that tissue into the shape of your island. and make sure you smooth some flat bits around the outside edge for the beach. Now, if you want to put some trees on your island, just screw up or scrunch up some tiny balls of tissue paper or loo roll and place those in the glue like that, put them into position and a dab of PVA glue on the top. And when the glue dries, it'll go really hard and those trees will look brilliant. Now, if you want to create some buildings, just cut little square scraps of cardboard. That's just tiny bits of cardboard dab some glue. I've got loads of glue there, so I'll just put one on top of the other, like that. And then for the roof of the building, just fold over a small square of paper. See that? Just created it into a roof. Place that on the top and position it wherever you want on the island. And the idea is to just build the island up. Just use your imagination. In fact, it's great fun trying to work out where you're going to put everything. And don't forget, it's your dream island, so you can do what you want. When the whole thing is dry, look at this. It's gone rock solid, and these really do look like cliffs, and you've got all the buildings and these solid trees up there. And now, to turn it into a paradise island, and you do this by painting it. And what I've done with this one here is I've painted the cliffs a nice grey, or you could even use brown. And the idea is to just really press your paint into all those nooks and crannies. Acrylic or poster for this, doesn't matter which paint you use. Now, for the tops of the cliffs and the trees, give it a really nice paradise feel and use some bright greens. Again, just going to slot that on the top, there like that. And for the trees, you could always mix in some darker greens, just to pick those trees out. And you could even put some yellows on there just to pick out some highlights, make it lots of nice greenery. Now, for the sea, it's probably a Caribbean island, so slop on a nice Caribbean blue. And you could even mix in some other blues, streak some other blues in there to give it a good water effect. Now, see this shimmering surf effect? I have to admit, I'm a cheat. To, ke to get that, I used some of this stuff, just ordinary kitchen cling film. And it's just a case of when your paint is dry, slop some glue on just to the sea area and then just cut bits of this cling film, place them into the glue and then wrinkle them up to create the waves. And if you do lots of waves by the cliffs, they look like crashing waves. And when you finish the whole sea, it looks something like that. And look at that. I've painted the beach a nice sandy yellow. I've painted the buildings a wooden brown. And that's it. Your own dream island. And if you do a few of them, you could create a group of dream islands. They look brilliant, don't they? Or what about creating a nightmare island. Try it yourself. 
your own dream island. Hello, it's the head. Now they are brilliant. And if you want to create one, just draw a rough island shape onto a piece of card. Dip scrunched up balls of glue roll or newspaper into PVA glue and stick them onto the card to build up your island. Glue a layer of tissue over these and push in your nooks and crannies, mountains and beaches. And bits of tissue or card for trees or houses. And when it's dry, paint it. And ask for some cling film if you want to glue on some nice frothy sea. And then you'll have dreamt up your very own dream island. Oh. idea for a big art attack. Take a look at this picture. There's something missing. Watch this. That's better. A shadow. 
And that's a good tip to remember. Put shadows into your pictures and make them look more realistic. For a start, it makes things look as if they're standing firmly on the ground instead of floating around in midair. Now, take a look at this girl. She looks as if she's floating around in midair at the moment, but a quick squiggle shadow and now her feet are planted very firmly on the ground. Of course, if you do want things to float around in midair, like this girl, then it's just a case of drawing the shadow some distance away from the bottom of the object, or in her case, from her feet, and now she's flying around in midair. Now, when you are drawing shadows, you have to decide which direction to draw them in. And here's another good tip. Shadows are cast away from the light. I'll show you what I mean. Just take a look at these balls. Now, this ball here on the left, let's pretend the light is coming from above the ball from, say, the sun or a lamp or a bulb, and it's shining down in this direction, so the shadow will be cast away from the light, so the ball's shadow will be underneath the ball. Now, the light is shining on this ball in this direction, so this ball's shadow will be cast away from the light in this direction. Now, let's try this ball. Let's put the sun up here this time, and again, it shines in that direction, so again, the ball's shadow is cast away from the light. Now, I'm just going to draw a little lamp down here, the light bulb in there, next to this ball, and if I shine the light in this direction, then this ball's shadow is cast in this direction, but because that lamp is quite low to the ground, the shadow is very long. And that's why your shadows are long at the end of the day when the sun is going down and it's very low in the sky. So, OK, let's put some shadows into these cartoons. Now, here's Nick. He's taking his dog for a walk at night. The lamp is shining down in this direction, so Nick's shadow will be cast in that direction, and so will the dogs. Suddenly, they hear a noise from down the alleyway. Nick shines his torch down the alleyway, and it's only a cat. But Nick's torch is quite low to the ground, so the cat's shadow is cast away from the light in this direction, and it's a very long shadow. And not only does it go across the ground, but it's so long, it goes up the wall. And don't forget, shadows go up things as well as across the ground. Now, Nick's dog hates cats, so it goes zooming off after the cat. Nick is tugged along by the lead, and he goes flying through the air. So his shadow is still cast in this direction because of the lamp, but his shadow is no longer touching his feet because he's flying through the air. And look at that, he's left the ground. So the dog goes off in pursuit of the cat. Nick is dragged along. Now, you've got the moonlight up here shining down on the dog, so the dog's shadow is cast in this direction. And because Nick is still flying through the air, let's do his shadow away from his body. There he is, still flying through the air. Eventually, they catch up with the cat, and Nick's dog pins the cat up against the wall. Shines Nick's torch on the cat, and again, because the torch is very low to the ground, the cat's shadow is very long. But the cat is now leaning right up against the wall, so the shadow goes up the wall, but it's still a long shadow. Now, the cat begs for mercy, offers the dog a sweet, and because he's a greedy dog, he accepts the sweet. And don't worry, it's a happy ending because they become great friends. In fact, they become such good friends that they start to take moonlit walks together. And there's the moon. It's really low in the sky, so the shadows are nice and long, and they're going off in this direction, away from the light. Try it yourself. Make your drawings a lot more realistic and put shadows in them. Oh, that's really good. With just a quick squiggle shadow cast away from the light, you can make the characters in your pictures look like they're standing on the ground against a wall, hovering or even flying. Hey, have you ever seen me flying? Well, I use an aeroplane. <laughs> Hello, I'm Vicky. I made my art attack by gluing string along the lines of my picture. I then put PVA glue on it and sprinkled sand over it. Hi, I'm Hayley, and this is my sand art picture. First I drew the design, then stuck string down the glue. When the picture had dried, I then painted it. Brilliant art attack, sand pictures. They look like sort of ancient Aztec warrior designs, but with all that sand and tribal warrior face paint. And they're very easy to do. Great fun as well. Just cut the side from a cardboard box and then draw on a very simple design. 
Now, tribal faces work brilliantly for this. And just do a very simple tribal face and just divide the face into sections to look like tribal warrior makeup. Now, I think the idea with that tribal warrior makeup was to scare away the enemy. So just make your face look as gruesome and as ugly as you possibly can. Just make it look really funny. Uh, I think I'll start, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll just put the mouth open there and I think the tongue sticking out like that. This should scare off the enemy. And then when you've done your face, just do a border or a frame on the outside. And then decorate it with squiggles and patterns. And you can, if you want, at this stage, paint it. But if you want to give it a real tribal effect, then take some PVA glue and just slop your PVA glue very carefully onto those lines that you've drawn. And instead of having a design that's got black lines that are drawn on into that glue, I'm going to stick lengths of string and the idea is go over all of those lines with the glue and stick string in instead of having pen or pencil lines and when you've done the whole picture in the same way just put it to one side to dry and when you've done the whole thing and it's dry you'll have something that looks like that see that the whole thing is now covered in string instead of pen and pencil then take some more pva glue and just slop loads of glue onto your picture and you may think it looks a bit of a mess at this point, well, you'd be dead right. We'll wait and see what happens. And just spread all that glue out into the corners, into the nooks and crannies. And when you've covered the whole thing in glue, before the glue dries, take some sand and sprinkle sand over everything. Just sprinkle it over all of that glue. And when you've covered everything, just let the sand sink into the glue. And you may need to leave it a little bit longer, but then shake off the excess sand. And, oh, that's good. Yeah, looks all right, doesn't it? Look at that. See what's happened here? All the stringy bits are raised and give it a great 3D effect that almost looks as if it's carved out of stone. And then just paint all of those individual sections and do them in a real bright tribal warrior face paint colour and you can use poster paint or acrylic paint for this and it's a good idea to paint the whole thing in bright colours but those raised stringy bits if you do them in black you could even do them in black felt tip pen when the whole thing's done it looks absolutely brilliant look at this let me just put that to one side and there it is look at that and you see all the raised string bits here I've painted black well I did some of them felt tip pen because it was a lot easier and there it is an Aztec style sand picture and you can do any style you like actually you can always do an animal sand picture or what about a sun and moon sand picture and I did this rounded shape by drawing round a large dinner plate try it yourself a sand picture and I'll see you next time Ta -ra. Attack is sponsored by Pritstick.